Hello, and welcome to the Game Room. It's time to supplement your diet with vitamin RPG. And today's supplement is the Savage Worlds Fantasy Companion by Pinnacle Entertainment Group and Studio 2 Publishing. This is 156 pages, but is packed with flavor. The first seven pages are on the fantasy races, the dwarves, the elves, the half-orcs, things like that. They've also included in the cat folk and lizard folk, so you can uh, recreate the races that you might find in Skyrim. They, have, um, they also have a, a chart for racial modifiers, both positive and negative, affecting stats, skills, perks, uh, fee, you know, things like that. And you can recreate just about any fantasy race that you would like to with great ease. I, I used it to recreate all of the Dark Sun races and put them into the Savage Worlds rule set and it took me about half an hour. It was, it was quite easy to use and, and very intuitive. At the end of the race section, there are a number of new edges, which is the Savage Worlds version of feats and perks that you can take and um, bring in things like a dwarf's enhanced ability to sunder an enemy's weapon or shield because there are people who know the inner workings and the structural integrity of objects just at a glance. The next section is a small gear section, and it adds in a few new weapons, a few new pieces of armor, uh, the cost for mounts, the cost for adventuring gear like lockpicks and, and backpacks and torches and things like that. It also adds in the cost for goods and services, so you know when the players enter the tavern and they order up a sumptuous bounty, you know exactly how much the innkeeper should be charging them. There is also a small section on siege rules, and whether the players are besieging or being besieged, they have um, special actions that they can do during a siege to raise or lower the siege rating that is, that is going on during the situation. So they can start making stealth rolls and fighting rolls and some magic in there. And they can, you know, become inglorious bastards behind the enemy lines of that orcish encampment and start breaking the siege from, from that side. They can also use their charisma to foment rebellions and dissent amongst the enemy's ranks. So, you know, the rogue, the bard, the wizard, the warrior, they all have a place in breaking a siege or breaking the defenses of an enemy castle. Then we have nine pages of spells and a few new arcane backgrounds, such as alchemy, which lets you create uh, potions, and sorcery, which um, more represents the, the innate casting of a sorcerer from D&D rather than the, the book-learned wizard that the uh, spell casting in Savage Worlds uh, represented more. There is also ritual magic, which is, you know, slow and ponderous, as one might expect. But it also does not carry with it any sort of penalty if the caster rolls a 1. There's no spell backlash that might damage them. And there are also new trapping mechanics, which make the generic spells of Savage Worlds um, a bit more colorful and vibrant. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Savage Worlds, the spells work in that, you know, there will be a spell just called Bolt, and it's just attacking spell. And for a mage, that might mean uh, bolts of magic missile. For a necromancer, he might go, Whoo! and a screaming skull, you know, rockets towards the enemy and latches onto their shoulder and bites them. And using these trappings, you can add fire to the bolt, and it will start doing uh, prolonged damage. You can add ice to the bolt, and it may slow or freeze an enemy. You can add lightning to the bolt, and it may stun them. After the spell section is 50 pages worth of treasure. Now there are new weapons, new armor, new magical equipment such as flying carpets and figurines of wondrous power. There are ion stones, of course, and there are potions, and pretty much anything that you will find in the D&D Dungeons & Masters Guide. So through this treasure you have two options. You can randomly roll it up, and place it where you will, but random treasure always causes strange problems. You can also do, uh, and this is what I do, is that 
each piece of treasure has its monetary value right next to it. So you can say to yourself, hmm, okay, I feel like this necromancer's laboratory should have about a thousand gold pieces worth of treasure inside of it. And using this treasure budget, you start buying potions to place in the laboratory, you leave some gold and gems around in chests, and then you give the necromancer himself the lion's share of the treasure in the form of an amulet of protection that is worth 800 of the thousand that you've sort of assigned to this area. It's very easy to use. There are, um, there are you know, items that you can randomly roll up. There are items that have names and histories already, so those are flavorful and good. There are powerful artifacts that have intelligence and personalities. There are cursed items, if you would like to throw those in to frighten the players. Um, there are also everything from, you know, simple wands and staffs to potions. Like I said, everything that you will find in the DM's Guide is in this Savage Worlds Magical Items section. Then, there are 56 pages worth of monsters. And they have all the usual suspects, from dragons to demons to goblins to golems. There's a few unique monsters, you know, something you may not have seen before, but for the most part, it's, you know, manticores and minotaurs, things that we expect to see in a, in a fantasy setting. But, the Savage World's rules are simple enough that, you know, when you see the Frost Wolf in here, well, you change a few words, and that Frost Wolf becomes a Hellhound who's breathing out fire instead of his ice. Also, you can take a look at the stats and go, hmm, I want to make this ogre, you know, an ogre mage. And all you need to do is tweak them a little bit, and within, you know, 30 seconds, you've created your own, own sort of monster on the fly, which is quite useful. Um, so, finally, it needs to be said that since this uses the Savage World's rules, anything from fantasy to sci-fi, it's always using the same rule set. So, you can take this book, and add the magic and some undead to a World War II setting in which the, the Third Reich has unlocked the secrets of the occult and the players need to go in there and stop it. Or you can take the creatures and add them into a post-apocalyptic sci-fi setting in which case the trolls and the chimeras and the manticores, well now these are just freakish mutants that came from the radiation. Or you could add them into a supers game, because after all, what's an ogre except, you know, a street thug who's jacked up on Bane's venom and he's just, he's out for revenge on the heroes. So, in short, this tiny book has a lot of use if you're a fan of Savage Worlds. I highly recommend it, and thank you for watching.